Hello, spellcasters! My name is Chance, welcome to my spellbook, and thank you for tuning in to the 37th episode of our third level spell series. Before we dive in, recently I did an interview with Nerdarchy or Nerdarchist Dave. Um, please check that out, linked in the pinned comment. And uh, before you do that, however, of course, watch the video. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at Major Image, which is one of my long-standing favorite spells. However, its mileage may vary depending on the group you're in and your current play style. So before I hype it up too much, bear in mind this isn't really meant to do damage and there's a strong argument I've seen made for Phantasmal Force being a better option in the long run. However, you know what? I really do love this spell, and at higher levels, man, there are some really, really cool things you can do with this, and I'll get into that in a little bit here. But without further ado, Major Image is used by the Bard, Sorcerer, Warlock, and the Wizard as so far as to say it is found on their spell lists, and it is found in the good old player's handbook, old reliable as it were. Now let's take a look at its mechanics here. Its effect at a glance is as followed. Create a multi-sensory illusion. Physical interactions or a successful investigation check reveal it as an illusion. The cast time is a one action. The range is 120 feet and it occupies a 20 foot cube. The duration is 10 minutes and it is concentration, but at higher levels, and this is one of the coolest things, using a spell slot of sixth level, this spell lasts until dispelled, and that's right, it's essentially permanent. The components are the Holy Trinity of material, somatic, and verbal, and if you're curious about the material component, it is a bit of fleece. However, there is no monetary value attached to it, so it's not super consequential to anything. Now, before we get into the description here, I do want to point out the one of the incredible things about this spell that no one really talks about, and that is its impressive range. 120 feet is very excellent in terms of this spell and you can cause it to interact and do cool things as long as you're within that range so it's very nice it's very nice <laughs> i like it a lot if you can't tell now let's move on to its full description here you create the image of an object, a creature, or some other visible phenomena that is no larger than a 20 foot cube. The image appears at a spot you can see within range and lasts for the duration. It seems completely real, including sounds, smells, and temperature appropriate to the thing depicted. You can't create sufficient heat or a cold to cause damage, a sound loud enough to deal thunder damage or deafen a creature, or a smell that might sicken a creature like a chocolate ice stench. As long as you are within range of the illusion, you can use your action to cause the image to move to any other spot within range. As the image changes location, you can alter its appearance so that its movements appear natural for the image. For example, if you create an image of a creature and move it, you can alter the image so that it appears to be walking. Similarly, you can cause the illusion to make different sounds at different times, even making it carry on a conversation, for example. Physical interaction with the image reveals it to be an illusion because things can pass through it. A creature that uses its action to examine the image can determine that it is an illusion with a successful investigation check against your spell save DC. If a creature discerns the illusion for what it is, the creature can see through the image and its other sensory qualities become faint to the creature. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of 6th level or higher, the spell lasts until dispelled without requiring your concentration. Very cool stuff. So there are a couple things I want to quickly go over as it relates to the description. So during the smell that might stick in a creature, I believe the reasoning behind why it specifies like a troglodyte stench is troglodytes actually have a trait that would sicken a creature. 
However, I think there's a much stronger argument to be made that you could cre that you could sicken creatures with particular um, weaknesses to certain sense. Um, by this, what I mean is if um, you were to encounter a uh, certain NPC that for whatever reason just was made ill by the smell of, I, I don't know, a certain type of flower, let's say. And let's say it was related to previous memories and experiences with regards to said flower. Then I believe this spell would be enough to sicken or maybe impose the frightened condition on that creature. It's rather interesting. However, I have heard arguments made in the past, and this will get a little weird. I've played with some weird groups. But I have heard arguments made in the past that if you could replicate the smell of a toxin, then would it have the same effect as that toxin, you know? To that I say no. It, it would. You would have to find a very lenient DM to make that happen. Reason being is the toxic effects of things like like smelling salts would be an interesting example. Um, the the one he was using was chloroform, as if you haven't figured it out. And I'm like, no, no, of course not, because it's not the smell of the thing that does it outright. It's the chemicals themselves, and this is just an illusion, right? So it, it wouldn't really have the same effect, as far as I can tell. So by raw, I'm gonna deem that a solid no. I've I've heard the argument made in the past, no dice, I won't allow it. Another thing I do want to point out is this is an illusion, and that means you can't perceive through it, right? It's not as though um, it, it works like your familiar does, where you can spend an action and look through its eyes. It doesn't work that way. If you can't see it, odds are it's not going to be doing anything unless you command it to do otherwise. And even then you'll be doing so blind, and if your illusion accidentally walks through a wall or something, then it'll be interesting for sure. But not to say there's not a ton of cool ways to use this, I'll get into that in a little bit, but just bear in mind there are some things that are that you're able to push and some things you're not. So um, always consult your DM before you feel like you're going to be crossing a line into a gray area and always listen to them when they give you feedback on how to use this spell. Illusionary spells are very strong and they consistently have been throughout Dungeons and Dragons and maybe even the fantasy genre a, a, as a whole as it relates to magic, but um, they, they do have specific limitations for reasons. In any case, let's move on here to some alternative uses. So, as with most illusion spells, or most spells that affect perceptions in general, this list is uh, as long as you want it to be. I'm going to give you some that are really interesting, um, but for the most part, it's up to your own imagination. So the first one is using this to create a compelling doppelganger or gather information in some form or fashion. To do this, you actually need to center the spell on yourself. Um, and then you can essentially change your appearance. I think the race that benefits most from this is Warforged, actually. Because they can make it as though they're, by most metrics, human. Unless someone physically inspects them. Which is really cool, right? It'll give them a heartbeat. It'll give them the appearance of giving off body heat. It'll give them all this cool stuff. And along that same vein of thought, I suppose you could use it to trick um, various creatures uh, into thinking that you're something else. The issue with this, and the thing I still see debated in some remote forums, is that what if you, if you make yourself smell like something different, uh, as so far as to say the illusion produces an odor, does that mean your odor would be null and void? Or would it be both of them? By raw, it's both of them, right? Because this spell doesn't actually affect um, anything in the physical world. It's not a transmutation spell by nature. It's an illusion spell. So it, it, it is an interesting thing. And I'm not 100% certain about my um, understanding of aromas and how they work. But I don't think it's like frequencies where two opposing aromas can cancel each other out. I might be wrong on that. If you've done research on that, let me know down beneath. But it, it is an interesting way to do it. Another interesting use is to use this to 
uh, impersonate royalty. This is for um, DMs more so than um, individual players, although I suppose players can reap the reward from it if they're of a evil persuasion or maybe it's circumstantial, but it would be very cool if the main quest giver to the party turned out to be nothing more than an illusion perpetrated by the BBEG, right? I think that would be a very interesting plot twist. And with this spell, you know, it's certainly doable. It's certainly doable. Um, along the same vein of thought, if a party were to kill a bandit leader and then create an illusion to assume his place and have said illusion give a rousing speech that persuades the bandits to move elsewhere in the province or country, that would be interesting as well. Another great way to use this is to use it to create monsters or creatures. This is especially good if you're in a hairy situation and your enemies don't have a particularly high intelligence. I mean, if they do, it might not make sense given the circumstances, but if they are on the stupider end of things, then they're likely to believe it, and especially since it has a sensory effects to back up its claim, it'll be really interesting. You can also take this to a rather illogical conclusion, and this is something I'd only recommend doing if you're in a campaign that maybe has a stretch of time where you're not doing a lot of combat or maybe you're just a strictly utilitarian caster you you can use this spell to make an army right like a like a literal army um that just follows you around if you have a necromancer friend you can disguise a lot of his or even anyone that conjures a lot of animals like uh, like druids for example um, you can really use this effectively to disguise a lot of those creatures or skeletons as more threatening creatures it would be an interesting usage of it for sure um, there have been some interesting posts involving people using this spell to create a whole town. I think that's more of a DM thing than a player thing, but who knows, given enough time, if you have a, a, a long stretch of period where um, the party members are separate pursuing their own training, then that would make a lot of sense in that regard, I suppose. But for the most part, it's something I don't see come up in too, too many games. Um, a lot of people, I find, often underuse this spell, as with most illusion spells. I think the catch is they require a lot of foresight. Um, even though it's only an action to cast, the more research you do into a given area or a given creature or given circumstances, the more likely you are to gain significant benefit from this. However, illusion spells... As much as it sucks to say, there's a weird, almost adversarial relationship between a lot of them and certain martial classes. Reason being is a lot of these spells are aimed at ignoring combat altogether, uh, where a lot of classes specify or focus in rather exclusively on combat. So it really is interesting. However, I suppose you can use both, right? Like if you have. I've been noticing a lot of posts recently about rogues hiding in the middle of a room and how it doesn't make feasible sense. With something like Major Illusion, or Major Image rather, uh, you can feasibly do that, right? Create like a barrel. Uh, y y if it's just a random barrel in an empty room, it might be suspicious, but um, you, you essentially replicate something else in the room of sizable, or of, of, of a decent enough size where you can hide within it. It stands to reason that because you're aware it's an illusion, it'll be kind of transparent to you and you'll be able to get in there and just go ham. If you have the skulker feet, then you'll really be able to reap a lot of rewards out of that. Um, kind of, it's a little bit reminiscent of my Skyrim style of play, to be honest, the stealth archer, but it is it is really cool. I like it. In terms of classes that benefit from this, uh, arcane uh, trickster for sure, and then uh, Warlock would really benefit from this as well. Um, Wizard, really anyone with access to it would benefit with through it, but I feel like the Arcane Trickster in particular, very, very good choice for them when they get access to it. In any case, that's really about all I have to say about Major Image. I could go on and on in regards to it, just 
through its mere nature, but I'll hand it over to you guys. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, be sure to include thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, alternative uses of your own, and any cool stories you have involving it. That being said, if you want to get a free one-shot, check out the guild hall, links down beneath, go to the job board, then use code WELCOME to get it. I put quite a bit of effort into all of them, so I hope you do enjoy. And of course, check out that interview with Nerdarchist Dave, just a great time, absolutely love talking with him. And um, yeah, that's going to be about it. Uh, make sure you're subscribed and check out the community tab for all of today's videos, and I will see you guys in a couple hours.